morning, everybody. We're coming, had a great morning, had a great evening. I think you saw in the firelight and uh, that worked out great. Good sleep, cool, but not hot. Hasn't started raining yet this morning, as they predict. We got up about 5.30 and biscuits and gravy. And uh, got a good start to the morning. And now we're just kicking it along. There goes Zia. <clears throat> and you can see the path is beautiful this morning. We've already made it up that first hill. Not, maybe not all the way up to beauty spot, but a good start. But we were hot because we were sort of working off of yesterday's temperatures. And so we had to stop and shed a layer. And now we are good to go. Uh, water is sort of sparse up in this area. Um, there's just not a lot of water sources. It's not that it's dry. Uh, so it's just a consideration. So I think we go over beauty spot, but before we get to Yunaka or however you pronounce it, um, we will have to find a water source. Of course, you don't want to be dragging too much water up and down these hills because they are, again, peaks over 5,000. Yeah, so what a beautiful morning. Wow. This is beautiful. For you guys starting out now, you know, if you start out like this for a couple of days, instead of already in the rain and sleet and freezing rain and snow, definitely going to set your tone a little bit different than those of us who came before you. And watching some videos last night the guys who came before us the week before us have had even more pronounced issues with weather so this year not a great year for a February start frankly uh, but we're almost into April now so I think with this budding of spring until the bugs start eating this alive, everybody's going to be joyful and making great mileage. Yeah, it should should actually help improve the uh, trail quite a bit because we're going to be able to spend some more time with each other uh, other than just in the hostels. So that'll be really cool. Get to learn more about each other. So... Z and I were just tracking this morning. Probably come across Bear Meat and Clooney. They camped a bit ahead of us. Uh, they may be up already, it's hard to say. Um, but this is a morning we do not want to waste. So we decided to get up early and get our groove on. How Zia got his groove on. Didn't they do a movie about that? What's that? How Zia got his groove on. Didn't they do a movie about that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, bring you up later, guys. This is, I believe, beauty spot. And well, it looks like maybe we're on a false summit of beauty spot. Because now coming around the bend, I can see elevation rise. But it was sure pretty, so I thought I'd take a picture for you. There's sort of an iconic picture. Hiker walking along the trail with the white blaze right there. Boom. The sunrise in the background. Okay. Well, when we get to the top of this next summit, maybe we will have a better overview picture. But there's a lot of trees here, so we'll see. I'll do the best I can. See you in a bit. 
I'll take this picture here. I don't think anybody else is stupid enough to take it. Going up Unaka. Pretty good ascent here. Yeah, so this is what it looked like since we've started this ascent. Basically, get some stairs, get some steep area, then almost like a bit of a respite, and then back up. Really well designed means you don't have to stop. There's Zia just below me. So, okay. Don't stop till you reach the top. Still going up Unaka. Um, just wanted to give you a good shot of the trail. I've done this a couple of times in other areas because not just this area, meaning Unaka, but ever since we left Hot Springs, this has very much been the trail. I've shown you some great pictures, but you know how pictures are. You know, they're easily staged and easily cropped. So, we do have open, flat, nice areas of the trail. Um, but a lot of it is pretty pronounced roots, these roots, ruts, rocks, slippery. Um, they somewhat serve as a staircase which is beneficial, but sometimes they're a tangled mess. You spend a lot of time stepping with your poles like this and then slamming the pole into it or pole slamming into your knee or you picking up a, a stick in the front of your toe or, oh my God, look at this. Reminds me of the Adirondacks with this bed of of uh, pine and the moss growing up the trees. Takes me back to my childhood up around Lake Pleasant in the Adirondacks. How beautiful. Wow. Turn the camera on at the right time. Anyway, because of the little roots and rocks and stuff, you end up sort of tripping a lot, picking up a stick by accident and shoving it into the front of your shoe and having it slam against your foot or shin or something. Um, so you have to be pretty methodical as you come through this area. Oh man, this is beautiful guys. I don't know the light it seems like the camera's grabbing more light than is here, you know, from the optical coatings. So it looks a little bit brighter, on, at least on the viewfinder, than what it is when I look at it. It is stunning, guys. Stunning. I was just talking to Hannah. She's a gal that I met, um, I think, well, certainly after Newfound Gap. She had hiked the beginning of the trail with her dad. Now she's on her own. She's with a couple right now, or was at least, last night. They stayed at the bottom of Yanaka. 
mountain at the base, I guess, and came up just in front of us. And she stopped part way up the hill. And so I got a chance just to say hi. And, um, you know, the immediate common theme was yesterday's beautiful weather, last night's picture perfect evening, and today this cool dampness to hike in has just changed our attitudes amazingly. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, hear what he got. Bear meat and Clooney. Look at this, in one of the most beautiful places that we've seen almost since the Smokies, right? Doesn't this remind you of the Smokies? A little bit of snow and the, the moss and everything. Although this is obviously pine forest instead of the deciduous, but man, this is cool. All right, stop here. Okay, it's about 10 minutes to 11. We've done a little over eight miles and we will come in to a shelter here, top up on water, maybe even eat lunch now so we don't have to necessarily stop again. Down here will be Hannah. Um, another couple, I don't know, but I'll find out who they are and introduce you. Uh, maybe Bearbait and Clooney, but they seem to, they frequently don't stop. Oh no, they're here. And then of course, Zia Fox and me. So this is what a shelter looks like. Since some folks are a little bit more interested in camp life, I thought I'd show you. So just in the back side of most of the shelters is going to be some water source. In fact, I think pretty much all the shelters have some water source as part of the reason they put them there. Now, when you come out of the Smokies for some reason, it seems like the privies stop. Before the privies, like in Georgia and stuff, North Carolina, but maybe here in Tennessee, they don't believe in privies. A lot of them have some sort of pipe, but some of them, people do nothing but put a leaf in the stream just to give it a little bit of flow. Now here, this is a three liter bag. I only fill mine up about a liter. And each one of those, 2.2 pounds. So, that's all you do. But right now, I'm on Aquamira tabs, but you gotta wait four hours. But that's what I'll put in this. Um, and then I have iodine, which are only 35 minutes, but the iodine isn't really good for you, so. I don't use too much of it. Anyway, that's the simple process. Getting water here at the shelter. And then Z and I are gonna move on. We only have nine miles to go, it's not even noon. I don't know what we're gonna do with the rest of the day. So we have According to gut hooks, just come around this to the. We've had a couple false peaks on this one. Come up to the peak of this, sweep down and around to one more hilltop, which will position us right in line for the for Roan, and then. There is a hostel two miles away, which is tempting us not as a place to stay because we have a pretty nice night scheduled ahead, but they 
are tempting us, taunting us with a shuttle ride to a restaurant. And that may be too much for our will to resist. I mean, I've only had a mountain house dump, uh, what is it, um, biscuits and gravy this morning. Then I had about five oversized handfuls of trail mix. Then I had um, oh, a single packet of Spam and about 15 pieces of Sargento extra sharp cheddar cheese. Then about 30 minutes later, I was hungry, so I had the remaining about five pieces of that Sargento cheese. 11 o'clock, I was famished, so we had to stop and cook up a ramen with about 30 pieces of pepperoni and a breakfast sausage. Then it's about, at about 1.30, I had one of my favorite snacks, the Sierra Trail Mix Cliff Bar dipped in Jiffy peanut butter. That Jiffy peanut butter on the go cup. Those two match up perfectly beautifully. So now I'm out of snacks for the day. I've got about four miles to the shelter where I've got two miles to the promise of a shuttle to a restaurant. So sometimes your hunger may dictate your actions. I don't know. Either way, tomorrow we're going over the road. Apparently we got a number of trails here. AT goes down that way. There's water down there in a blue blaze. Got a purple blaze right there. Green blaze. Got some red blazes. And a black arrow. God knows what that means. Alrighty. Bloody daddy.